It's like the American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Time. Timer flip. Seven times. BT system. You ain't testing your guests. Good morning. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Happy New Year's, ladies and gentlemen. Happy New Year's. Today is Sunday, January 2nd, 2022. It is 8.52 in the morning. And last night, right before uh, the wife and I and a bunch of friends headed out for dinner, I got a phone call. And the uh, homeowner's got a Burnham Alpine with a hard lockout. And that's why I, we stock the Burnham Alpine service kit on the other mics and I truck. We work on them, and those aren't wall hung junks. No, nope, they sure aren't. No WHJ for the Alpines. Those things are like wildebeests. That thing will survive a nuclear holocaust. He had no service in the past 10 years. He said they replaced the blower like a year nine, you know, when it was first brand new. Other than that, no service. And I got a feeling I know exactly what's going on, but I don't want to mention it because I don't want to jinx myself. I don't want to jinx myself. So let's go over there and see what's going on. That other thing in the cabinet. How you doing, man? Good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. What's your name? Mike. Mike. Owen. 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 Pleasure. Thank you. You got a burn them out, yes? Yeah. Uh, and it's been great. I mean... Uh, yeah, they're, they're workhorses. I mean... They are. We've done a number of them, and uh, out of all the wall-hung machines, I think uh, besides, like, maybe the Bosch and uh, lots of them, they're one of the best. What you're about to see in here? You probably see more. <laughs> oh god. But anyway. Oh, why is it on the floor? I don't know. When you said wall hung, I was like, wait a second. Oh. I don't know. You got the screen of death. That's the screen of death. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Has. Yeah. How old is it? About 10 years old, they told me, right? I'd say around 10. Has. What parts have been changed inside the box? Just the fan. Okay. I already know what the problem is. Really? You got a paper clip? Don't even tell me. <laughs> the paper clip is just for testing purposes. The paper clip is not the permanent fix. Because I was like, what the hell? <laughs> but then I saw this, like, this, this valve is leaking. And yeah, because it's like, cold. Um, hold on. What do you need? It's a paper clip or a piece of wire. Yeah. You need a flashlight? No, I'm good. Oh. I like to document my work and um, educational purposes. How'd you hear about us, by the way? Actually, you know how I heard about you? Let me guess. Google. I went on YouTube. <laughs> and there's a video of this boiler of this boiler with you guys doing it yeah did you see us did you see me fix it i didn't know if it was you okay I didn't know it was you. <laughs> but you doc somebody was documenting yeah. it so you know the screen of death so we'll go to help and it's yeah, going to tell us what's what what is and hard this. lockout and you're going to see a, a set of Sage. faults part 25 oh this is a different one actually This is a different one. Let's go back there again. Let's go to sensor fault. No. Uh, now we have soft lockout. Okay. Yeah, soft lockout, but then it goes to hard lockout. Uh, let's see. You, you can talk. No, of course, absolutely. No, no, no. Let's just see if that hot, high temperature sensor has been replaced and it has, it has, I think, hold on. I got to find out which one it is. Yeah, it's this one. All right. So let's get a paper clip. Software 25, hard lockout. Reset control. High temperature limits jumped out. Oh, no, it's back. Get out of here, really? Where's the power switch? There it is. 
I've replaced a total of, I want to say maybe two or three stage control, stage controllers. Active faults. Wow, your stage control is dead. Oh, but see, lockout cleared, and then it comes back. Wow, that's your stage control, version 2.1. Well, it's a 105. Today may be your lucky day. If I have it in the truck. And there's a reason why they call me Mikey Pipes. It should be Mikey Parts. There's the Alpine Sage Control version 2.3. It's in the truck, ladies and gentlemen. It's in the truck. And this guy's about to get hit hard on New Year's, day after New Year's. It is what it is. You know, just because the part is $600 on Amazon doesn't mean it's $600 on my truck. Yeah, three. I'm surprised. So what, what I was, let me tell you what I was doing before. So what I was playing with, with the end of this wire, you were gonna loop that, it. Is, that is the high temperature limit sensor. Okay. It's basically, it's like a, a temperature sensor that senses the, the temperature of the water. And it communicates to the, to the, the, the motherboard or the Sage 2 controller, right? And when it senses a problem, it turns, you know, it stops, you know, the boiler from firing. There was a recall on them, uh -huh. right? And for a brief period of time, and then it became, okay, listen, now yeah, you know. So when you come across one with this problem, it's not in the manual, oh. which is the video you saw yes. on our YouTube channel. Yes. It's not in the manual because it tells you after checking everything else, then to replace the Sage 2 controller. Right. Well, uh, several years ago, the day after Thanksgiving, I'm actually at a customer's house mm -hmm. and same exact problem. And we go through all the troubleshooting steps. Uh -huh. The guy happens to be a, 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 a private pilot with his own plane. Oh my and we found the supply house open in Albany. He uh, flew no to Albany, way. bought the Sage 2 controller, right? Wow. We put it in, still the same issue occurred. So I'm just scratching my head. I started jumping things out at this point. And finally, I came to the high temperature limit sensor. And sure enough, a little, it went a paperclip. Really? Yeah. So the initial one was still good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because it was not in the manual. Yeah. Because no one knew about it then at that wow. point. Because I guess I was the first one to die. Or maybe I was right. the first one to actually document right. everything. So wow. we're going to change this and the problem should go away. So for testing purposes, we're going to put a brand new one in. Oh, my It's a very expensive table, uh, table weight. Paper weight. Sure. I'm sure it is. It is what it is. The question is asked. The question is if, if I have that in the if truck. If you have these in the truck, is it a, a common piece that needs to be replaced? No. But my company and all the trucks that we have, right, we do, this is what we do service and repair. You found right. us on YouTube right. working right. on your boiler. Correct. Right, and now it's a Sunday, the day after the day after New Year's, and you have no heat and hot water. Well, yeah, you have, have oh, water. you have hot water because yeah. you have electric. Yeah. So the, to answer that question, no. But I have probably about a hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of parts on every truck. Oh, okay. For this particular example, wow, it's basically a, a mobile warehouse on wheels, and that's yeah. why. That's great. Now, the, the thing is, now, will this work? <laughs> I have all the It should. So now it's going to reconnect the wires. This is the Sage 2.3 controller, and hopefully everything will fire up and we'll be good to go. There it all is. Let's see what happens. Now, you saw that thing looped. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Sensor fault. Outdoor sensor is open. Good. Outdoor sensor. That's fine. Oh, hold on. Take two. So let's go into settings and let's get rid of outdoor sensor warning. Adjust, adjust, log in. No, Save, adjust, uh, more, outdoor reset, outdoor reset is disabled because we don't have an outdoor sensor, backpack, let's go to central heat, 180, good, uh, we don't have domestic hot water, good, 
system set up. Let's make sure she's an Alpine 105. Outdoor sensor status not installed. Frost protection. One more the shutdown. Okay, good, 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 good. Now it's waiting for it to ignite. Trying to spark ignite. We have ignition. Ooh. A little free to wire right there. That little noise it made. My, no, the, the little rumble. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. No, that's that's not normal, by the way. You probably heard that noise forever, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So, first things first. Let's just. I know the thing's ten years old, right? 9, 20, 10. All right. First things first. Okay. There is a service manual for this machine that just goes over all the steps for annual service. Okay. It's quite lengthy. Of course. To do the full service on this machine, to someone who is experienced, is about two and a half hours. I swear, yeah. Um, I would highly recommend that we schedule that for you. Really? It's a great machine. But if you don't do any service to it, eventually when, when you have a problem, like this, this was unforeseeable. You know, the, it's, a, it's a computer board. Okay. That could have been a power surge. That could have just been like just one little resistor, one little relay inside that thing died. And now you have a dead, a dead boiler. Right. That's, that's one of the inherited things of right, just what they quote unquote wall hung junk is, is referred to in the, in the industry. In, in the industry. <laughs> I'm serious. There are a lot of plumbers out there that just won't embrace the technology, right. which is this. Right. Look how tiny this exactly. thing is. Yes. And what was your fuel bill before? Yes, exactly. Exactly, and what right. it is now. But even if you factor in, let's say you don't do annuals, or let's say you do it every like three or four years. Uh -huh. Right, it's, you're still, your cost savings are tremendous. Mm -hmm. But you still need to, you should do that. Okay. Because what we do in the annual service, we disconnect the gas, we disconnect the gas piping, and this whole piece, this, 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 and all these bolts come out, we clean everything inside the machine, we replace, some uh, gaskets, we replaced the igniter. Like, you saw how it was ticking, 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 ticking. It took a little while for it. Right. That's because the flame rods are dirty. And it's probably cheaper and easier just to replace them. But it's one of the things we would do during an annual service of it. But again, it's not, it's, it's very tedious and time consuming work. Okay. I did one of, you know, US, this is, this is made by US Boiler. I did one on Wednesday, which is a, another American company called Lock and Bar. Okay. And it's a, it was a very, very tight closet. I was there the entire morning. And I've been doing this for 10 plus years, right. like almost 20 years, <laughs> or 18 years. And I was there all morning on one machine. You can imagine what the bill wow. was. <laughs> wow. And the only criticism besides it being on the, not being on the wall, is closely spaced T. Right, that should be much closer together. Um, this little black box, see this one? Did it ever, did it ever have a wire coming out of it? No. Supposed <laughs> to. Yeah, because that, that's called the low water cutoff. If there, if there is no water here at this point, because this is where it's, it's installed, the boiler will not run. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. It's a safety device. It's also, yeah. it's also a code requirement, but it so probably. It probably died at one point. If you never recall seeing it, maybe they, that's the way they always did it. Okay. But if it if it um, if it had a wire at the original date of installation, it died at one point, and someone just said, "Let's, let's just let's just take it out of the equation." Okay. Because you'll always have water, right? Unless like there's no water, you know, the water's right. cut up to the house, or this valve is closed, and this thing right. fails, and there's a leak in the, in the piping, and then Correct. at that point, you have catastrophic catastrophic okay. failure of the house. Anyway, right. it's like okay, let's add the bullet to the list for the insurance company. <laughs> Yeah, we are running. So I can put this on your... Uh... Absolutely. <laughs> we'll push you right there. There you go. I like it. There you go. <laughs> like so to further stress the importance, and okay, I don't care what you do or not. You know, it's just, I don't, I don't want to do it today. Okay. Because you're paying an arm and a leg today. Right? But Thank even, you. for example, see this thing with the electric tape on it? Yeah. And we'll turn it. See, look oh, at that. Boy. It's all corroding. 
right? This is one of the parts that we change if necessary during annual service. You shouldn't have electric tape for a gas appliance, which is part of a, the safety chain. So that's another, another safety sensor. It senses the temperature of the exhaust. Uh, again, just, right. your machine's not gonna blow up, it's not gonna die. No. Um, question, long. where does this drain to, this pump? Huh. You wanna know where that drains to? Outside? No. Somewhere else worse. No, it goes along there. Yeah. Along there, along there into my washer. Uh -oh. Machine. Dun, 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 dun. Down into the drain with a washer. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. At least it's all PVC. That's a good thing. Until it goes to cast. So let me tell you if what that, you know what that is. That's the condensate. Correct. Right? The condensate, right, is not water. It's very acidic. If that was discharging into, like, say, a, a, a sink and they had brass drainage underneath it, it would be eaten alive in a matter of years, a couple years. Because normally when we come out of a boiler or a high efficiency furnace or uh, whatever, we add what we call a neutralizer. And it's a, it's a container with, with these rocks, which aren't really rocks, but they're rocks, which then help kill that high pH, I think it is, or high yeah, level yeah. of acid, yeah. whatever it is, right, right. and makes it more like waste friendly. Right. Right, a and believe it or not, if for every 10 high efficiency boilers without a neutralizer, there's probably eight that don't have a neutralizer. Really? And the problem becomes, let's say all eight are being discharged into the public waste system, right? Mm -hmm. The treatment plants is where the problem becomes because now they, it's just not built for that, right? And that's where you get, you know, all this environmental issues going on. But there's a whole, I read, recently read an article on this, there's a whole article on how like the, the sewer, the waste treatment systems are the ones that, the, you know, the municipalities are the ones suffering with all these high efficiency right, systems because right. no one's really putting uh, right. kind of uh, neutralizers. Yeah. And sometimes they're piped in outside, they're piped in outside, and then cold weather, they freeze, and then you have errors. Nobody thinks of that. No. no. <laughs> that. Now, Not even the inspector. This thing is actually doing something. Yeah, but it's pumping away the condensate. But, but look at that. It's, I know. It's, it's just barely, dirty. It's, it's not even... Don't touch it. Don't, tu don't, don't really? touch it. If you touch it, you may break it. Oh. <laughs> well, that's... See, that's a brass fitting. And I don't know why I touch it, but uh, oh look, yeah, it's it, it off. Look, it's gone. See? Oh, it, it, the elbow. You brought it away. Uh huh. It ate the the condensate, the acidic condensate ate the elbow. That's why I didn't want to touch it because there's no metal here except for that little. Uh, yeah, that's all plastic. But I saw that was brass, a brass elbow, and I just. See, so why wouldn't they put this thing? Like, isn't there a PVC? Well, yeah, they could have, but it was just easier to do this with a, with a, with a, with a, with a zip tie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who installed it? I don't know. Okay. It was here. I'm in it was whole, here when you got this here. This whole thing was here when I got here. This whole thing was here when I got here. Your second floor thermostat is off. It is off. Okay. It is off. If there's resistance like this, oh, that means okay. the valve is, the thermostat okay. is, is, is not calling. If there's no resistance like this one, Right. That means the thermostat is calling and okay. the zone valve is open. Okay, interesting. Would you like a sticker? Just like this guy? If you would like a free sticker, email me, mike at mikeypipes.com. There are four different versions available. This is version 1.0. I have two, three, and four all available. Details in the description box down below if you'd like to donate to the postage fund. Well, I had my money going into this service call on the high temperature limit sensor. I did. And if we were betting, I would have lost. But nonetheless, that Sage controller died and replacing it was the only option. And the part was on the truck. And then after, you know, at the end of the service call, we're going over the bill. He already knew the price in advance. And I'm like, listen, you know, you can go online and you know, Listen, I could take the part back out of the boiler, right? And you'll pay me just for the, the hour that I was here and the, the emergency trip charge to come out. And maybe, you know, you could find someone tomorrow because the price is not going to change, you know, with us tomorrow. The only the difference is paying for the labor. So, yes, the part is expensive. When any job that Pipe Doctor Plumbing, sorry, Pipe Doctor Home Services does, we guarantee for two years. So for if any point in 24 months that part should die, right? We're going to replace it. 
So the $600 part that you can find online, well, good luck. You know, you go to the car mechanic. You're not paying. You're not paying him his costs for the alternator. You're paying Marco accordingly. All right. But nonetheless, he was very happy. We got his system up and running, and he even left me a Google review, five stars nonetheless. Now that's service. That's service. All right, guys. Hope all is well. Remember, membership has its privileges. For as little as $2.99 a month, you could be a homeowner level member of the channel. And from there, we go to Apprentice, HVAC Tech, and then Master. At a different price points, and you get different benefits. The, the benefit that all members get is that you get to see the videos before they become public, before I publish them, all right? You get to see them as members. That's one of the first, uh, one of the, uh, the benefits across the board. All right, guys. It's been a great service call. I'm gonna head on home. I'm gonna put this video together and then drop it to YouTube to the members first and this evening the rest of you will get it. Be well, God bless, stay safe.